So I'm going to uh, speak about design tokens and CSS and how you can use them to systemize the design of your components. But first, just a little bit about me. Um, this is where this is where my client's office is, which is in Heidelberg in Germany. Um, I work for Embel. Uh, does anyone know what Embel is? It's the European Molecular Biological Laboratory. Does that make any more sense? So do you know what CERN is? So it's like CERN, but for life science. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we went and uh, spoke at their, on their campus in uh, Cambridge, and I sat through talks about how they're making uh, DNA as a storage device, which is <coughs> amongst other things. So for the last five years, I've been contracting uh, with several organizations, helping them with their design systems and um, component libraries. And at the moment, it just feels like everyone is screaming the word design system and just won't stop to me. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a raise of hands because I didn't see anybody who works on a design system. Who knows what they are? Cool. Who doesn't know what they are? <laughs> Who's in the wrong room? Cool. So design systems, uh, design tokens and CSS. I'm not talking about design systems because that's what Lily did. <laughs> so um, essentially, lots of people think they're just uh, SAS variables. Um, so people, do people you know what SAS variables are? Preprocessors pre -processors and stuff? So essentially, they think uh, they're, they're, you know, a design token is essentially a SAS variable, um, which is the other thing is it's SAS of capital S, lowercase a s s, not like that. But um, according to Gina, design tokens are the visual atoms of the design system, and they're specifically they're named entities that store the visual design attributes. Um, and at Salesforce, they use them in place of hard coded values in order to maintain a scalable and consistent visual system, which kind of sounds like variables, but I'll expand on it. Uh, this is a diagram I found on a Medium post, I think. Um, so essentially, you've got like, a, you make your design systems at the top, and then you put them into a file for a format like YAML or JSON, which then goes into a generator, which then gives you these design tokens as SAS variables or CSS custom properties or, you know, uh, XML and Android or JSON and iOS or whatever the next new thing is going to be. So you've got that abstracted level of uh, you know, these uh, design decisions that can then go filter down into the language that you need them to create the product, which then can go into several different products. Um, so they're kind of just like spicy variables, really. Um, and that's the point, because there's design tokens. A couple of years ago, there's a bone in contention with the term used. Um, and it's kind of whatever works best for your team. Uh, variables, super variables, constants, design tokens, uh, primitives, these are all terms that Gene has heard. Uh, essentially, what design, you know, essentially design tokens have been termed this, I think, um, like Amazon called them style dictionary attributes, I think, or something like that. Anyway, um, so what can design tokens be? Uh, quite a few things. Uh, it's quite an exhaustive list. Uh, essentially, you can, whatever, decision you make in terms of color or sizing or fonts or anything essentially can be a token. Um, and I'll read, uh, so yeah, sizing, font families, font styles, font weights, font sizes, line height, border radius, border styles, border colors, horizontal rule colors, background colors, gradients, background gradients, box shadows, text colors, text shadows, time, media queries, Z indexes, and icons. And there's probably some more, really. So uh, several websites have, uh, several design systems already have design tokens. So we're just going to have a quick look at how, um, how they display them in documentation. This is a comment from the discoveryeducation.com. Uh, they, so they have them uh, as SAS variables because it's a web page. Uh, and they list out what, uh, what the values are of those variables. Um, then you get into actual showing you the color as well as the text color and the background color and whether it's uh, going to be, you know, got good accessibility, contrast ratios, and stuff like that. Uh, and then um, Salesforce show their typo typography tokens with you know, SAS variables again, and what they look like, and then also their font size, and also the line height. And then there's icons that you can do, which is the from the EOS icons, EOS design system. Uh, spacing. Um, so you can have them as uh, like the name and what the value is and what they look like. And then same with borders, with the colors, and then shadows. So you can, you know, lots of permutations of the same thing can be shown in several ways, um, and it's a good thing. 
and then also breakpoints for the web as well. All these things are design tokens, which essentially, you know, they're for every one here, there are they're SAS variables really, but uh, they're, they're abstracted again, just so that they'll work for other properties as and when you need them to. Um, so there's several tools that can do this. This is Theo's, uh, this is Theo, which is from Salesforce, where design tokens kind of came came from um, with Virginia. Uh, this is Style Di Dictionary, which is Danny Banks, this is one from Amazon. Um, Dragon Run, which is from Nate Baldwin, who works at Adobe, but I don't think Adobe used this for Spectrum CSS. This is a new one that's come out this week, Chromatic, which essentially is the same thing. You give it some JSON and it will throw out your SAS variables or your J uh, iOS JSON or your XML for Android or your custom properties. Um, there's sort of larger systems-based ones. This is in React from uh, Brent Jackson. Uh, which essentially is the same, but it gives you the JavaScript bits and bobs you need uh, for, for React. And then there's another one, Design System View Tools, where you can use it with style components in Notion. Glamorous. Uh, and then this is about two weeks old, where you essentially, it's like a widget, it's like a online GUI, which you can then, uh, so you keep it all online, you store it all online, it's got the documentation there, and then you can you know, pull it as a SAS file or a sketch, um, things, uh, uh, which is kind of what DS does as well. Um, so again, you just give it, you know, you, in this one, so you've got like a nice graphical user interface, so you can choose the colors and then it will actually spit it out so it's not as like um, daunting for people that might want to sort of help with the design tokens. And then you've got like uh, Envision's Design System Manager and Figma that sort of have their own, inter like their, their design tokens, which can then be pulled in for SAS. Or less, or stylus variables, or custom properties, or for Android XML, and so on. Um, so essentially, your build, your you design tokens help with your consistency and your maintainability and your scalability because everything has to scale in 2019 um, from like a single abstract. Because if we go to another bank, this is uh, a bank in the US that Brad Frost uh, took a screenshot of of uh, several buttons. You can obviously see like with Lily's example from Halifax, there's you know, buttons are buttons are a great thing. Um, all design systems conversations, I think, end up in buttons. So if you take the button um, like this, uh, you could say that for like for something like Adobe for Spectrum, it needs to go across four different themes, as well as the states. Uh, so that's you know four times eight times four. And then you've got it across six different platforms as well. So it works out at uh, 1,080 permutations of a button is being used somewhere. So if we just look at the button there, um, we've got all these design decisions to uh, define from it in tokens. So we've got the variants of typography, the color palette, the borders, the shadows, the spacing, uh, the interaction states. But then if you dig deeper again in typography, you've got the font family, the font size, the font weight, the line, uh, the text transform. And in color, then you've got the text color and the background color. And in borders, you've got the border color, the border style, the border width, the border radius. And then in spacing, you've got the padding top, left, bottom, right, top, left, top. <laughs> and then you've also got the mark. Do I, do I win a prize? You've also got the margin top, bottom, left and right as well. And then you've got the interactive states with the hover text color, the hover background cover, the hover box shadow, the focus text color, background color, and box shadow, and the border color, and the focus border width. And then you've got the timing on how long things take. All these design decisions that can be uh, abstracted into tokens. So this is the bit I dread. Uh, where are we on the right one? So this is just a, a simple uh, component library uh, using Fractal. So we've already got these. Uh, so this is like the doc this is rough documentation um, because I'm not a designer of of the design attributes. But what we're doing here, if we go to this one again, is we can see that we've got. How I'm kind of working this, which I think is kind of cool, is so you have these aliases for your border, you know, your breakpoints and your colors and stuff, and then you can go globally. My colors are called this, 
I mean, color red, color, you know, that's not gonna, that's not gonna be a problem down the road. So, you know, call it <laughs> color red or color pink. Um, and then from globally, you can then go to like a theme. So you can go from, you know, your brand primary color is blue, uh, and then your brand secondary color is purple and so forth. And then you can take it down, which I think is really cool, into the patterns. And then in this way, you're from the abstracted design tokens, you're making the decisions for the developer so that they don't have to think about, are we using the correct color red? Um, not that I've implemented this in any client work. But then, so, so you've decided in here, in your design tokens file, that this button, these buttons are going to have like the, all these styles. And then he finds the terminal and he goes to the right one. He presses clear if he wants to do all that stuff. Oh, it's because it's running already. So, oh, dead. I found it open another window. So you've got your buttons. Oh, no, there we go. So you've got your buttons here, but what I've got it to do is to compile it from this abstracted uh, le level with your uh, in your design tokens, which then uh, compiles to a variables file, which then gets imported. So that this is this is auto generated. Do not edit, and then they can your developers can then pull them in as to where they need to be. In there, which is, I think it's kind of cool. It's something I've been playing with. Uh, but I've not implemented it in my client work because it will I'll probably make everything explode if it doesn't. If I did that. It's not worth it. Um, so this is how we kind of this is how I kind of work with the design tokens of my current client is that we have these this abstract level of design tokens in YAML because we find it more readable than JSON because it's white strict, so it hasn't got curly braces and stuff like that that can confuse people. Uh, me, uh, which then get compiled to uh, global SAS variables. So you can have uh, like color red dash dash 500 as a SAS variable if you wanted to. But it also then goes into global design tokens, which are like primary, secondary, and like font size one, two, three, four, uh, which then get pulled into uh, component based design tokens or global SAS maps. So it's, it's levels of authoring. And then levels of over, levels of being able to override it into the compiled CSS as well. To, yeah, it's written. Yeah, so that's quite, kind of how it works. We we can't. Yeah, so we don't really do the overriding bit. The idea is that you don't override stuff because obviously, what's what's the point in doing? It? Um. So with design tokens, it gives you the opportunity to update your brand colors in one place, and then for it to filter out into all of your products. Um, so it helps you streamline the redesign process. So that if, if all of a sudden, uh, so previous client, we we went from salmon pinkish to like a light tech brew, a uh, blue brew blue, and that was just a case of the design token being changed, and then it filtered out into the product that it was uh, needed. Um, but there's always this internal struggle with design systems: uh, how flexible you want to make it, into how consistent you want to be. Um, because you do get uh, one-off uh, designs, like Lily was talking about. Um, so you can decide, like, if you've got linting in your in your tooling, which I think you, I should, I recommend you should have. You can decide what you want to have as like a, you know, your colors need to have a SAS variable rather than a hex code, so that it will fail when it goes uh, on a pre pre commit push with Husky. Uh, before it gets to GitHub, it'll go. Oh, that's, you should be using a variable here, not you know white. Um, and by making the tokens available to all the digital teams, it enables you to create custom experiences that have the current standards that you've got uh, when the component does not like exist in the design system. So when you have got like a, I'll show you in a bit. So when you have got like a a, a, com, uh, a pattern, a component that is only going to be used on one site. It doesn't need to be in the design system because you're just putting levels of complexity in it that you don't need to. So you can. Um, what we've done is create uh, utility classes with the design tokens. So they auto generate um, a class name with the correct like one one to one you know color background color border color yada yada yada. 
from the design tokens. So as well as having them that will act, as well as having design tokens that then go into the actual component, we also create these utility classes with some SAS magic, which works out quite well when you get something like this, which is um, sketch file. I get sketch files all the time uh, from my boss, and he says, "I've just no, I've just thrown it together. Use use what's in the system." So you know, if it's font sizes and spacing is usually off, so that's all uh, that's all fixed. But on here we've got this. So this is a button. This is an image. This is the header. This is general content. But this here is a component that we haven't got in the system, and it's a component that's only ever going to live on these website on the training websites. So with the uh, with the utility classes that are built from design tokens, we can then go in and go, you know, you can build that you want this text body here, and you want it to be gray, and you want to have no margin, but actually you do want to have a small margin at the bottom, and then you've got above it, or below it somewhere. And so essentially you'll write, so VFU is the utility class, so you're telling like this part of, the, excuse me, the code, uh, override override what you've got with this, or if you haven't got it at all, like up here, you're just going, you know, make make my component look like this. Mm. So it gives you that opportunity to then for other teams to go, well, we want this component. You know, it's not part of the design system, but it needs to look consistent. You can easily do that. Um, another thing I'm quite keen on, and have been qu quite keen on uh, in the last four or five years is being where the authors are. So rather than going, oh, you must need, you must learn this, you try and create the tooling and the assist them into using what they're used to to create what uh, what you, they want to do. So YAML and JSON is quite ugly. The user interface of having to go into a code editor is probably not going to be nice to most people. Uh, so Kalig from uh, Shopify, not Spotify, Kalig uh, created uh, this little hack where you get a Google, uh, Google spreadsheet and then it can generate your design tokens, which I think is really cool. So we're going to try and do this again. Press escape in this one. There we go. And then you think I can close completely. And then I can go to here and go there. So. I mean, that's probably a night. It's a night. A spreadsheet's a nicer thing to look at than uh, an IDE with someone else's theme, with text, uh, white space text, or text and curly braces with JSON. So you can go into here and then you can change. Uh, say we're going to add like this is um, to be used on all Twitter, say something like that. So at the moment we've got it in here of colours. Oh, we've got this one up here. So we can quickly then go to this one and go clear. Clear. Can you see that? Build the tokens. And what it's doing is going off to Google to the spreadsheet, pulling in, pulling in the data there, and then it's uh, generating the co code there with, to be used in all Twitter. So it gives you like it gives um, essentially non-developers that don't live in IDEs all day, the opportunity to help. So it's more like a collaborative closing of the gap between designers and developers and stakeholders and project managers and stuff. Uh, the only problem with this is that it's um, your Google Sheet needs to be public, which if people somehow manage to work out the URL, which is always, you know, could be a problem. Um, but then I think this is quite cool because you can import Google Sheets into Google Sheets. So effectively, you could do the, you know, big decisions of green, reds, blues that go into primaries that go into components. You could do that all in spreadsheets, um, just because because you can import them and import them. And then I think that's cool as well because then you could set up a webhook to go. Oh, they've changed the Google Sheets. Let's quickly go and render all the design tokens, and then your apps will go, oh, wait a minute, we've got some new design tokens here. Let's re-render everything, and all of a sudden, everything gets, you know, all the new colors, or all that, all that small change you've done. Uh, so, something I've yet to actually investigate, but I'm sure that's possible. It's, it's code. I mean, it's got to be. <laughs> it's only a little bit of JavaScript, surely. Um, but sometimes you've got a website already, and you, you want to um, 
build a design system from it or start to build a design system from it. So there's a new tool called Superposition, Superposition, uh, which is beta access only. Um, and essentially, you give it a you give it a web address and it spits at you the colors and the type and the spacings, whatever, which you can then export to custom properties, SAS, XD, I think it's in Sketch from Figma and Swift and Android are coming. So you can, ex uh, and then you can copy the whole lot. So it kind of, it's like a, a stop gap, I suppose, until you sort of pull the tokens into something like Theo. But it's good that this gives you something to start with. Um, and then when you get to like this, you might realize that you've got like, Two colors similar or three colors similar, you can use a tool, another tool just uh, called from Project Wallace, which analyzes your CSS and it gives you like, um, yeah, it can give you some horrifying, you know, effects of how many how many times a color is being used or how many colors are being used, and then you, you've got a night you get a nice like line of the graphic from white to white, not white to black, but from color to color, the rainbow colors, whatever. Um, and you can see like there's this huge chunk of blue in the middle and that blue all looks similar, but they're all different hex codes. So it's, it's great to, so when, so when you're starting on something like this, it's great to then, you know, just throw it into here to go. I, and I do do this for like gov.uk and BBC. It's amazing what real world stuff happens. So, um, I keep a, a, a GitHub repo of updated stuff of the, of all about design tokens, which is github.com forward slash grobson forward slash awesome dash design dash tokens. Um, and then there's the design system Slack. If you're not on that, uh, you have to email and ask, ask to be invited. And then it's uh, double off now because of things. And then, um, I run a irregular newsletter about design tokens as well, and it's very irregular. I think I'm 22 days since the last one, and my RSS is. Uh, but I'll get there. Um, and that's kind of it, and I've done that really fast this time.